We've all seen it, sometimes it's hard to miss, but what is fog and how does it form? Fog is essentially a cloud on or near the ground and this causes visibility to drop below a thousand meters, but dense fog can lead it to drop below a hundred meters, which can cause severe travel disruption. As with clouds, fog is caused by tiny droplets of water floating in the air. But not all fog forms the same. There are actually a few different types of fog, classified according to the process which produces the saturation or near saturation of the air. Radiation fog. This usually occurs overnight in the autumn and winter when we have clear skies and light winds. The cooling off of the land means that the air close to the ground gets colder too, allowing for condensation to occur. The fog forms initially at the surface, but further cooling at the top of the fog layer actually then causes it to deepen. Radiation fog often clears soon after sunrise as the ground warms up, but in winter, when the sun is weaker, it tends to linger longer and sometimes lasts all day, keeping things cold and very grey. Valley fog. This happens when cold, dense air sinks down and settles in a valley. This then leads to condensation and for fog to occur. It often happens when there's such thing as a temperature inversion, where there's a warmer layer of air sitting above the valley. This then effectively traps the fog in between the hills either side and the warmer air above. In the winter months and during calm conditions, this fog can last for several days. Advection fog. This occurs when warm, moist air passes over a colder surface and is cooled. A common example of this is when a warm front passes over some lying snow on the ground. It's also quite common at sea when moist tropical air gets blown over cooler waters. And if the wind is blowing in the right direction, then the fog can be transported into coastal areas and become coastal fog. This is a regular occurrence along the eastern coast of the UK and is most common during spring and early summer when the North Sea is still pretty chilly, but the air has started to warm. In eastern Scotland, it's known locally as Har, whilst in eastern England, the coastal fog is referred to as Fret. Upslope fog, or hill fog, forms when wind blows up a slope called orographic uplift. The air then cools as it rises, which allows for the moisture in it to condense out, creating the fog. Evaporation fog. This is caused by cold air passing over some warm water or moist land. When some of the relatively warm water evaporates into the lower layers, it warms the air, causing it to rise and mix with the cooler air that's passed over the surface. The warm, moist air cools as it mixes with this colder air, allowing for condensation to occur and then the fog to form. Evaporation fog can be one of the most localised forms of fog. It can happen when cold air moves over a heated swimming pool or even a hot tub where steam fog easily forms. Or it can happen when cold fronts or cool air masses move over warm seas. This often occurs in autumn when sea temperatures are still relatively warm after the summer but the air is already starting to cool. Freezing fog. This, as you might imagine, is fog which forms in sub-zero temperatures. The tiny water droplets in the air become super cooled. This means they remain liquid even though they are below freezing. This occurs because the liquid needs a surface to freeze upon. When these super cooled droplets from freezing fog do hit a surface, a white, beautiful deposit of feathery ice crystals is formed. This is referred to as rime and is often seen on vertical surfaces exposed to the wind. Mist and haze. One question I often get asked is, what's the difference between mist and fog? Well, they are the same thing, water droplets floating in the air. It's just a question of how far you can see. As fog is denser than mist, if you can see one kilometre ahead or more, then it's mist. If the visibility is less than a thousand metres, you have fog. Haze is a slightly different phenomenon, which is a suspension of extremely small dry particles in the air, not water droplets. These particles are invisible to the naked eye, but sufficient to give the air an opalescent or slightly murky appearance. Driving in fog. One of the greatest hazards from fog comes when driving through it. 
there are a few things to be aware of when you are. Use dipped headlights. Full beam lights reflect off the fog, causing a white wall effect. Use your fog lights, but remember to turn them off when visibility improves. Keep an eye on your speed. Fog can give the illusion of driving in slow motion. And don't hang on the taillights of the car in front. Rear lights can give a full sense of security, but leave a bigger gap. Watch out for freezing fog as well, which can quickly form a layer of ice on the road. Thank you for watching and remember to subscribe to our channel so you never miss any of these Met Office Explains videos. Remember, fog can be impactful enough that we may need to issue a weather warning for it. To find out more about how and why we issue warnings, have a look at our other explainer video.